Did you know that according to Dave Ramsey's research, among millionaires, only 21% are inheritors of wealth? That's right. That means that 79% of all millionaires are self-made. People who were able to climb the ladder of financial success with their own sweat and blood. Some of the famous ones like Phil Knight, an accountant turned business magnate, the co-founder of Nike, the 27th richest man in the world. Another, Michael Bloomberg, who was from a middle-class family. And when he joined the Solomon Brothers early in his career, he earned only $9,000 a year and started from the bottom. And now he's ranked 16th among the richest men in the world. And of course, yours truly, and I'm not trying to brag here, I come from humble beginnings, the project, single family, single mother, illiterate, and now I'm earning millions of dollars through my brick and mortar businesses. I'm not trying to brag at all, but simply trying to emphasize that with hard work and the right mindset, it's possible to become financially successful and a millionaire without inheriting wealth from your ancestors. Actually, my heritage, I got slavery on both sides. There was no generational wealth given. And if you wanna learn more about me, you can watch The Real Munif Ali, a rags to riches story on how I came about. I'm not here to talk about my own life, but instead I'm here to share with you some of the habits that I've incorporated in my life, which have greatly helped me achieve all the success that I have today. I'm not talking about exercising or eating healthy or waking up at four or five in the morning. Today, I'm talking about something a little bit more different. So stay with me until the end of this video. So you guys all know, self-made multimillionaire, and I'm starting this channel to share my life experiences on how to become successful. So if you like this type of content, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button. The number one habit, journaling. As a businessman who is managing up to nine businesses at any given time, no matter how organized I am, there are times where I get overwhelmed with my schedule. My long-term goals, my business ideas, and all that other stuff coupled together with the fact that I have five children and a family. So journaling is one of the habits I have developed over the years to dump all of my thoughts into one place. When I write things down, I see where my struggles are and my wins are especially when it comes to my businesses. And that way I can easily come up with solutions for problems and issues so they don't linger. So basically it also works as a progress tracker and a reminder of how far I've come from that boy lining up to get that welfare cheese that I did so many times in my youth to the business owner that I am today. You can customize it based on your needs. And in my case, as I've said earlier, it's a progress tracker. It is where I put my long-term goals down and then I figure out solutions and opportunities so that I could achieve them. What my struggles were and how I overcame them, my business ideas that come to my mind so that I don't forget them. But you can do it differently, like some kind of a diary where you just rant your heart out on things that are bothering you or an outlet for overwhelming emotions. <laughs> Writing things down would only help you achieve your goals. It also acts as a therapeutic activity when you're struggling with it. Number two is to focus on producing instead of consuming. When you associate yourself with self-made millionaires, you will see that some things they have in common. For example, they focus on producing instead of consuming. When you have free time, what do you do with it? According to a survey, on average, most people spend about three hours watching TV during their free time. As people get older, that time increases to five or six hours a day. But you see, millionaires spend their free time differently. During their free time, they build skills. These range from pursuing hobbies as simple as playing instruments to painting and doing sports to reading tons of books to learn new things and increase their knowledge. They do this as entertainment, as a way to increase their value. Habit number three is to step back from time to time. That grind culture that's already been greatly integrated into our society and through social media, well, let's talk about that. It's even more prevalent nowadays and most people don't seem to be able to make ends meet with just one job. I don't have anything against the grind culture. It's admirable when people wanna put a lot of effort to pursue things that they want. They work hard at it. In fact, I'm a firm believer in action and getting things done. However, taking a step back and checking your progress is just as important as taking action to advance your long-term goals. By taking a break and reviewing your actions and choices, you can see where you're currently at in your life right now and your career goals and how they compare to your past achievement. Even Bill Gates, one of the richest men in the world, has a think week where he isolates himself and spends that time thinking and reading. So get comfortable with being alone, spending time in solitude, really figuring out who you are and what you want. I find that some of the best ideas that I've come up with are times when my brain is completely relaxed. Either you're at the beach or you're in the shower and things are just coming out, right? And that's what you have to focus in on. At least spend a little time every single day doing that, nothing. And you start to see your brain operate in an amazing way. The number four habit is blocking schedules and filling out calendars religiously. This is especially important for those who have a lot of things on their plate, like work, business, family, studies. When you have a lot of things to do, it's very easy to get overwhelmed and disorganized. This is why it's very very important to have routines in place and block out your schedule and filling out your calendar is one way to do that. All you have to do is to schedule your activities like when you're gonna wake up, 
When are you gonna start working? When are you gonna rest? When are you gonna spend that time alone or with family or friends? And when you're going to do just about any other stuff. You don't need to go into extreme detail or even put too much time and you don't even need to track everything like how much time you spend in the bathroom. But what's important is that you schedule the most important activities. This will eliminate procrastination and create order in your life. To know more about how time blocking is scheduled in detail, watch this video tips on how to use time blocking. Number five is networking. As Jim Rohn said, you are the average of the five people you spend most of your time with. The individuals whom you spend the most amount of time influence who you are. And if so, it is important to surround yourself with positive, like-minded individuals. People who share your values. People who will uplift you instead of drag you down. If you could, better yet, surround yourself with self-made millionaires. I'm specifically saying self-made because they are more relatable than those with those trust funds. Self-made means that they've gone through a struggle to get where they are, so they know the real value of money. And I think their advice would be more more practical and helpful for those of us that want to build wealth from scratch. That's all the habits that I have implemented in my life that are the most important and that have helped me achieve financial success. I hope that you found these valuable and if you do, give this video a thumbs up and click on the subscribe button and the notification bell for more content like this. And if you're still hungry for more, check out this video, how to boost your alertness and focus during the day.